Hey everybody and welcome back. First of all, I want to say I apologize for the time that we've had off uh, from the podcast. We missed an episode last week, but it was not for a bad reason. I was down in Galveston, uh, Texas, just outside of Houston. I uh, was there at a competition with the gym that I work, uh, I work with here in Shirts uh, to support their program, uh, both the or I should say the Austin location, the Katy location, and our location here in San Antonio. And they had an incredible, incredible showing at the competition. We got um, a handful of bids to uh, to Summit, which was one of our biggest goals for our program. Um, and then on top of that, just as a shout out to San Antonio Spirit, um, they also received a few, a few bids to, uh, D2, to D2 Summit. So that weekend, last weekend, was a huge weekend for San Antonio Cheerleading. Um, so huge congratulations to, to both of those programs. Continuing with our congratulatory efforts, um, some of the guys, some of the people that we've had on in the past for the podcast um, had some pretty good weekends this weekend, especially um, down there in Orlando at UCA College Nationals. So first and foremost, have to give huge, huge congratulations to Colin Cockrell. Uh, if you guys remember, he was on the podcast a few months back. Um, the, the title was Interview with Maui. Um, amazing athlete out of Weaver State. You know, if you've seen, followed us on, on any of our social media platforms, you know uh, my feelings on Colin. He is, in my opinion, the best male uh, cheer athlete in the world right now. And this weekend... Uh, and I've been telling him since we since we became friends, I've been telling him, I truly feel like you're going to win nationals. I think you're the best out there. All you got to do is go and show him. And uh, story, keeping the story short, it's exactly what he did. Uh, if you haven't seen his routine from college nationals this past weekend, you got to go scour the web, find it, find somewhere where you can get to see this routine. It is absolutely insane. Uh, so congratulations to Colin on your UCA Partner Stunt Championship, best couple uh, in the country at the UCA comp. Extremely incredible. Uh, second, congratulations to University of West Georgia and their program. If you remember, um, again, one of our first interviews we had was with uh, coaches Brian and Nicole Nichols from University of West Georgia. They clinched another national championship to add to their program. Again, continuing on with that dynasty that we talked about uh, in their interview. If you haven't listened to their interview, um, it's something that I urge you to, to scroll down, take some time and listen to this interview. It's amazing to hear about a married couple that has taken a program, you know, essentially that was, uh, you know, at the bottom of, of the success pool, so to say, and, you know, have launched it into multiple national championship uh, dynasty programs. So again, great interview to go listen with them. And then lastly, uh, GCU Grand Canyon University uh, that we had on for our, our last interview was Coach Keegan Hubbard, uh, State Director uh, for Arizona, as well as Cheer Coach at GCU Grand Canyon University in Phoenix. They went and competed this weekend at a very high placing in their division. Uh, so proud of those guys. Congratulations to you as well. It was a good weekend. <laughs> it's been a good. It's been a good a good week from last weekend to this weekend. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff happening in the cheer world, and you know, you think about it. We're on the 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 other side of the season. We've we've gone beyond kind of that halfway point, so to say. Um, it's getting closer to you know our big competitions. We've got nationals coming up for NCA um, here shortly. We've also got, I mean, just around the corner, guys. You're looking at you know Worlds and Summit and D2 Summit are within the next you know three to four months. So definitely a lot of time left in the season, but. It's getting close to those, those big, big events that everybody looks forward to. So for this week, I do want to get back in and answer more of your questions. We do have some interviews coming up um, in the upcoming weeks. One interview is going to be with L.S. McLean. He's the, the cheer coach at Texas State. Awesome story. Um, and just the things that he's doing in the sport right now um, fall right in line with some of the, the things that we're working on with strength and conditioning. You know, he's, he's like a mad scientist where he's – experimenting with different strength and conditioning programs for his athletes, you know, and he's writing these plans, having them go and do them for, you know, a handful of weeks and then reporting back and seeing uh, the outcome. So kind of a mad scientist of sort when it comes to conditioning for, 
uh, his cheer athletes, but excited to get him on to uh, to pick his brain. Um, you know, he's just like uh, like uh, Michael Pucci, if you remember the interview we did with Pucci. Uh, he was a, a national champion with UCF uh, back in the early 2000s. Um, they won UCA College of Nationals. He was an athlete with them and now world record holding power lifter. Um, and so now LS is also in that same boat, extremely gifted in strength sports, uh, but yet still coaching cheer. And to, to see some of that overlap is, is pretty cool. So this week, we're going to answer a couple of your questions. Um, that we have some that you guys submitted to us um, that we haven't gotten to yet that I would really like to touch on. I think it'd be very beneficial, especially at this time in the year um, when we're really honing in on perfecting skills uh, for competitions and really trying to shave off some of those deductions that we may have gotten um, in previous comps. Our first question is: What are some recommendations for conditioning for flyers? Now, my view on flyer conditioning is a little different than the traditional um, traditional view that's out there, which is pretty much flexibility and endurance, right? So yes, those things are very, very important, but they're overdone, right? So number one, we have to remember one of the concepts that we talked about before, right? We're looking at the energy systems of the body or how the body uses fuel in different ways, right? So when you look at the cheerleading competition, of two and a half minutes. That's very close to a sprint. It's in that middle range between not being purely a sprint, you know, you're thinking 30 seconds or less, all out, you know, all out effort is, is a is a sprint. In that mid-range of you know up to five minutes or so, four to five minute mark, and then five minutes and beyond is more of our long-term energy systems. So number one, when we think about conditioning, yes, endurance is important, but we have to have the right type of endurance. If we're not if we're training long duration, slow, steady conditioning, we're missing the mark, right? We need to condition for our needs, which are we need to have an athlete that is adapted to performing high intensity activity for two and a half to three minutes. So first of all, is if you're going to focus on purely cardio and conditioning, we have to set it up to where it's effective in that middle range more than anything. Okay. Now, yes, those other ends are important because like a tumbling pass falls into kind of that sprint category. You know, in a full practice, that's going to fall into that long duration, um, lower energy output, energy system. But our competition, our bread and butter is that middle range, that not quite a sprint, not quite, you know, running a marathon right in the middle. So when it comes to conditioning, working intervals of like, you know, one to three minutes and doing repeats of that is going to condition your athletes a whole lot better. But one of the issues that we see with flyers is they focus so much on their flexibility, not enough on stability, that they struggle when it in, in, in skills when they're in the air, not because they're not flexible, but because they're not strong enough to maintain body positions. And so as they start to fatigue, instead of being, you know, falling back onto um, their body positions being held because of proper body positioning and strength, they're modifying the way that they're in the air, their body positions, so that they can use less muscles and they're more stacking themselves on top of each other. I know that sounds like it could be a bit confusing, but you you know what, it, it, hip hiking is the exact example of that. So if you have an athlete that has deconditioned glutes, the muscles that control their hip, if they're weak there, you'll notice that they hike that other leg up in the air. So let's say they're doing a lib, where a left leg is lifted, you'll notice that left hip is torqued over towards the right and what they're doing in that instance is that they're trying to stack their weight their center of gravity over that right leg and use their skeleton use the bones in their leg as their support instead of the muscles of the hip and so the biggest thing i like to focus on with our flyers is hip strength and hip stability um, focusing on body lines and body positioning is also very important but at this point in the season you know, when you're looking at cleaning up routines so you can shave off points for deductions, when, it looks, when you look at your flyers, working on hip strength and stability is going to help with that because it's going to stabilize the stunts at the top and it eliminates variability for your top girl um, in her body position. So that makes it an easier thing to work with uh, for your bases and back spot. Remember, everything that you do, every single person is an active member. So we can't have weak 
and just hyper flexible flyers because they're small because then they're no longer an active member of that stunt. They have to be active. So we need stronger and more stable flyers. And the only way to work on that is with strength building. So I would suggest working things like, uh, you know, box step up drills, mat step up drills, you know, where you're folding the mat, you're stepping onto that mat, really focusing on hip positioning, you know, long duration holds in certain body positions like your Liberty. Uh, put them in the lid and have them hold it and for as long as they can and watch what their hips are doing. See if their hips are uh, tilting or rocking one way or the other. And if they are, correct them and have them hold that position until they begin to be proficient in it. If you uh, check out our Instagram and our YouTube from early days when we first started posting content, there's a video uh, working with a flyer named Jalen. Um, and we have her in a lib on the ground with a band uh, for resistance and she's pushing the band away from herself and bringing it back towards herself. We do that from both directions. Um, that exercise alone is tremendously helpful with building stability because you're adding resistance from the sides in a one-legged stunt. So if they're able to fight resistance and still stay steady, they're going to be able to hold their body weight without resistance a whole lot easier. Um, so just giving them different stimulus in the body positions that you're looking for can also be extremely beneficial. Uh, working things like lunges, squats, and a lot of, you know, uh, glute strengthening. Another video we posted, um, I believe the title was Flyers Falling Out of Stunts. We show an exercise called a monster walk where you band the knees and you're doing, a, you know, kind of a quarter squat walk with the legs in a, a widened position. And that activates a lot of the muscles in the glutes and hips to build strength there. So if we can focus on hip and glute strength, I believe that's the best thing we can do um, for our flyers outside of what we're already doing. Um, because again, we focus so much on flexibility and conditioning during practice um, that if we put some focus and strength, especially around the, the midsection of the core, it'll pay off tremendously. Before we get to our second question, we're going to pause for just a second so we can hear from our sponsors for this episode. Um, again, these sponsors are, are helping us to grow a scholarship for our athletes. So we'll pause for just one second and we'll be back with our second question. And we're back. So our second question is, uh, here we go. How do we get a faster rotation in the tuck? Okay, so, so I'd probably say mental blocks and standing tucks are the two things I get asked most about or we get requests most about. And we posted quite a bit of content along the way of drills and things to work on with tucks. Um, when it comes to faster rotations in the tuck, let's talk about them. Let's talk about what we're looking at, you know, when it comes to like mechanically, what, what is that motion? Okay. The tuck portion of a tuck is driving the knees up towards the chest in a rapid way to create rotation that flips us over. Okay. The muscles that are responsible for that are our hip flexors, the muscles in the front of the core. And then depending on if you grab like around your knees or underneath your legs, when you tuck your arm muscles also become helping factors with this. Okay. So if we're looking at increasing rotation or speeding up rotation in, in our back tuck, we have to increase power output by these muscles. Okay. Cause if they're the ones that are generating the rotation, if they're weak, they're going to they're going to put out less power, which equals less rotation. And if they're stronger or more powerful, they're going to make a faster rotation. So first of all, breaking it down into those individual things, strengthening your hip flexors with doing things like leg lifts, uh, doing things like um, the seated frogs where you're sitting on your butt, you straighten your legs out front, bring them back in, kick them out, bring them back in, or bicycles where you're sitting on your butt and you're kicking and pedaling your feet. Those are working core and a lot of your hip flexor strength. Additionally, you can work on hanging knee raises, right? So you're hanging by a pull-up bar and you're bringing your knees up towards your chest. We had a video in the past where we showed a banded, uh, banded tuck drill where you lay on the floor with the band around your feet and you're going into that tucked and rolled up position while you're laying on the ground. Again, using resistance to build up that speed and power. Um, but also things like working plyometric drills where we're jumping or creating uh, more explosive output 
is going to be very beneficial as well. One of the things that I see a lot of that is something that can be fixed pretty quickly and make a pretty fast difference is where our athletes are grabbing. Uh, when we see standing tucks, you know, with our, you know, with with gymnastics versus cheer, gymnastics is much more, you know, much more uh, specific about how they want the tucks to look versus cheer. Like, yes, there's, you know, there are deductions that can be made for, you know, non aesthetic tucks, but for the most part, it's kind of get over, right? Just make it over. So, if we're grabbing behind the legs and the legs are kind of piped, not necessarily fully straight, but let's say the knees aren't bent as much as they could be, that extended lower leg creates drag and it slows down the rotation of the tuck. So one thing that I suggest for athletes right off the bat is start working on grabbing the front of your leg, like under your knees when you tuck, or if you're going to grab behind your leg, make sure that you're not straightening your lower leg, make sure your knee is fully bent. By staying tighter there and just by, you know, bringing the lower leg, and by lower leg I mean your calf, like your shin and down, by bringing that closer to your body, you're speeding up your rotation because you're a smaller object, so you'll spin faster, right? So just making sure that we're not piking at all and that our legs are tight, uh, basically kind of heels to butt while we're rotating will help to speed up rotation quite a bit. Um, and then honestly, just repetition. I mean, just... Constant repetition, working on breaking down the tuck into its pieces, and then for this purpose, focusing on that middle section, that, that, that reach and pull, you can do any variation of leg raises, flutter kicks, you know, knee, you know, the, the tuck roll-up drills, hanging knee raises, um, tuck jumps, just working pure tuck jumps, jumping in as high as you can, tucking, and then landing back down. Anything you can do to, to reproduce that pulling up or closing motion of the hip is going to be hugely beneficial. So check out the content that we have uh, for tug drills on our YouTube and our Instagram page um, for more information and kind of some descriptions of how to do some of these strength and conditioning exercises and continue to submit your questions for us so we can answer. Remember, we do these, we want to answer questions that are relevant to you guys, especially now in the, the dead heat of the season. So if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us. And again, want to thank all of our supporters so far that are helping us to build our scholarship. If you would like to become a supporter for the podcast, go to anchor.fm forward slash cheerleading, where you become a monthly uh, contributor to the podcast, again, helping us to build scholarships for our cheer athletes that are headed off to college. Thank you guys so much for joining. It's been a pleasure to catch back up with you all. Again, congratulations to all the teams that did well uh, over the last couple of weeks, earning spots to Summit, earning bids to, to D2 Summit and to our winners and high placers at UCA College Nationals. You guys have an incredible week, and we'll catch you on the next episode.